Onk Live Insights is a video editorial program produced by Onk Live. There's a lot of buzz about immunotherapy, as you know, although uh, in pancreatic cancer, we don't have really major leads in terms of immunotherapy, but that's something which is uh, uh, which is being uh, developed and tested. And we're cl the closest we, we are in immunotherapy in pancreatic cancer is the vaccine, the recent vaccine trial, which showed some promise, and it's gone. In, uh, and then we have a, a larger trial, which is accruing very rapidly, and we'll have an idea about the use of the vaccine in this disease as an immune therapy. So the immune checkpoint uh, inhibitors have been very uh, very uh, intriguing because they have made a, a, a good uh, uh, forward step in the treatment of uh, solid tumors and more recently in hematological malignancies. Um, we have some uh, uh, results that have been very promising, for example, in lung cancer recently. But at this point in time, um, we don't really have a, a, a good feel for pancreatic cancer. In fact, I can't tell you that there are results that are really intriguing at this point in time. But it should be, again, work in progress. Uh, we're understanding more about the biology of pancreatic cancer, especially the immune infiltration of the tumor cells. We may need to do things to increase the immune infiltration of the, of the tumor cells and then come in with additional drugs like checkpoint inhibitors. We may need to combine the vaccine with the checkpoint inhibitors. So I think there is still a lot of uh, potential, but it, it, the work has just started. So we don't really have a, a good feel of what's really out there, which is going to be uh, uh, applying to this disease as a, as a treatment in addition to what we have at this time from the standard treatments. In terms of uh, novel uh, cytotoxics, so the one that's sort of most proximate on the horizon is MM39As, which is liposomal arenotecan, and that has been evaluated in a phase three trial in conjunction with infusional 5-FU and leucovorin, um, with a reference arm of infusional 5-FU and leucovorin and a third arm of single agent MM398. This is the Napoli 1 trial. Uh, these results were presented at the World GI uh, ESMO meeting and have uh, indicated that the addition of MM398 to 5-FU and leucovorin resulted in improved overall survival. So those data are under review with the FDA, and the, um, the potential is that this will be uh, an additional drug that's approved in 2015 for pancreas cancer, and we'll have to, to learn how to integrate it in, in, in terms of uh, where it fits in treatment and how it fits related to arena TCAN. So that's that's one of the novel uh, cytotoxics. In terms of other novel agents, there are uh, a large series of uh, novel agents ranging from drugs like uh, OMP5905, which is a, a notch stem cell inhibitor, uh, which has undergone phase 1B testing and now in evaluation in a randomized phase 2 trial. Uh, JAK-STAT inhibitors, the whole theme of oncoinflammation uh, and its relevance to pancreas cancer has come to the fore following the RECAP trial, which was a relatively small randomized phase two study that was conducted in advanced pancreas cancer in patients previously treated with gemcitabine and randomized to uh, ruxolitinib or placebo on a backbone of capsidabine. And in a pre-specified subgroup of patients with an elevated C-reactive protein, uh, there was a fairly convincing suggestion that ruxolitinib added to capsidabine. And this is now being explored in two follow-on phase three studies, the Janus-1 and Janus-2 trials. And in terms of other um, JAK inhibitors uh, being being developed in pancreas cancer, momolitinib is, is undergoing uh, phase one, uh, phase two evaluation on a backbone of gemcitabine and uh, paclitaxel. Another, you know, very topical area is, is this whole area of stromal targeting and where it fits, um, recognizing this issue of the physical barrier and impaired drug delivery and whether breaking down that barrier is a good thing. And we think it might be, but I don't think that's proven. And several drugs are designed to do that. PEG-PH20 uh, is the one that's perhaps most known in terms of hyaluronidase uh, pegylated enzyme inhibitor, and that's undergoing uh, randomized uh, 
phase two testing on a backbone of uh, gemcitabine and nap paclitaxel and also phase 1b testing with fulfurinox so there'll be data forthcoming hopefully over the next year or so in terms of that particular compound heparins have had you know a very interesting history in oncology there's always been the suggestion that uh, people who receive low molecular weight heparin had improved oncologic uh, outcomes and in pancreas cancer there may be a dual benefit because uh, of very high rates of thromboembolic events. So novel targeted uh, heparin derivatives are also in, in development and a drug called Necuparinib or M402 is uh, undergoing randomized uh, phase two testing. And this drug has you know, a host of putated mechanisms. It's not entirely clear how it works, uh, but anti-metastatic, anti anti-stromal, maybe some anti-angiogenic effects. And uh, I think very interesting and highly relevant to the biology of pancreas cancer. So we'll see um, wh where that where that goes. So th there's some of the themes, and maybe might add just going back to this BRCA subset, and um, PARP inhibitors are an area of active research following on from the breast and ovary cancer world, and recognizing that probably in an unselected patient population, about five to 8% of people with pancreas cancer will have a BRCA mutation, uh, but in certain subgroups, people of Ashkenazi heritage, people with strong family history, uh, that number, that percentage is, is significantly higher, and the use of platinums has become established as a de facto standard in that group, but also experimentally um, evaluating other drugs which have homologous repair uh, effects, and PARP inhibitors are, are obviously a very logical theme, either as a single agent or in combination with cytotoxic therapy. And it's been a little difficult to, to give PARP inhibitors with chemotherapy uh, because of overlapping toxicities, in particular myelosuppression. So that's another very active area for a subgroup, but that subgroup may actually be larger. So there may be a much bigger group of people with um, broader defects and homologous repair, maybe check one, the mismatch repair protein um, deficiency uh, patients, uh, ATM, etc. So we're still don't know where this bar begins and ends in terms of what that group is, uh, but it's it's likely beyond just uh, the the uh, straightforward group of bracket one, bracket two, and and, and palb. Probably two patients. So we have several studies that are uh, sponsored uh, by the NCI evaluating uh, viliparib in pancreas cancer. So the initial experience was defining what the dosing of viliparib in combination with uh, cisplatin and gemcitabine was in a in an unselected patient population, although we had two groups, those with, who ended up being wild type for BRCA and those who had a known BRCA1 or BRCA2 mutation. We, we were able to establish that you could give uh, viliparib with cisplatin and gemcitabine and saw a very striking effect in the uh, BRCA mutated uh, group that was non-randomized uh, compared to people who didn't have a BRCA mutation. So that's led to an ongoing randomized trial which uh, uses uh, cisplatin and gemcitabine as the cytotoxic backbone. This trial is, is conducted only in patients with BRCA1, BRCA2, or PALB2 mutations. And it's a collaboration between centers in, in North America, Israel, and Canada. And we'll evaluate whether the addition of valeparib uh, increases the response rate, increases the duration of response, increases progression-free, and ultimately overall survival. These are unknown questions, uh, along with a host of sort of correlative questions looking at uh, mechanisms of sensitivity and resistance and biomarkers of homologous repair. And then we have a third study for which the data are presented at the uh, GI uh, ASCO uh, symposium, which looked at single agent filiparib in previously treated BRCA mutated uh, pancreas cancer. And here we saw a signal. Arguably, it's not the most sensitive place where I think the signal will be uh, in terms of stable disease. Um, some patients doing very well for an extended period and sort of bringing up the question of whether these drugs will have a role in the maintenance setting. And we all were previously mentioned that. Uh, a related compound, Aliberib, is, is being evaluated in, in this maintenance setting. 
With regard to pancreas cancer and, and novel areas, I, the other big topical area is the whole field of immunotherapy and what's happening in pancreas cancer. And uh, there are several, I think, interesting approaches out there. Uh, the One of the approaches is looking at modulated listeria in combination with uh, Chivax, which is an allogeneic uh, vaccine that's derived from several patients with pancreas cancer and has been genetically modified uh, for its immune enhancing effects. And a previous small uh, randomized phase two trial suggested uh, that the addition of Listerian GVAX in patients in the second and third line setting with pancreas cancer had a benefit. And that's prompted a larger randomized phase two experience. And that study's underway. Uh, again in a second and third line setting with a control arm of single agent chemotherapy and also isolating whether uh, GVAX and Listeria combination is better than Listeria on its own. So certainly very early, but signal that there's uh, potential benefits. I think other strategies are CAR T cell approaches, which are in their relative infancy in pancreas cancer. Um, but the field has learned a lot from what's happened in other diseases, and there are several studies now poised uh, to to be developed. So, so several are underway, um, and I think there's certainly from the scientific rationale, there's a lot of potential uh, for that. Um, some of the uh, immune modulating drugs, such as abrutinib, is going to be evaluated in pancreas cancer. I think you know, very interesting um, effects and checkpoint inhibitors, although checkpoint inhibitors on their own have had a modest signal, but it is possible that if the immune environment related to the cancer can be manipulated and immune effector cells can actually get into the tumor, this body of literature suggests in pancreas cancer they're excluded from the tumor, uh, that that may be one way of bringing back checkpoint inhibitors uh, in, into this disease, which so far haven't you know, haven't had uh, the successes that have been seen in other malignancies.